Today, we're going to begin reading the national bestseller, Enrique's Journey. This book tells the true story of a teenager's journey from Honduras to the United States to try and reunite with his mother. This is the winner of a Pulitzer Prize, and it is by Sonia Nazario. Enrique's Journey. These are our essential questions. First, what is the journey like for people trying to get to the U.S. from Central America? And second, why are people willing to make such a difficult journey? After hearing the description of the book, the true story of a teenager's journey from Honduras to the United States to try and reunite with his mother, what do you wonder? Or what do you want to know about this story? What questions come to mind? We are going to pause and have a discussion about your expectations and your questions regarding the book Enrique's Journey. We aren't only reading Enrique's Journey, we are going to do a book study. And the purpose of this book study is to help you learn to engage in critical thinking, to examine an issue and develop a position on the issue, and to help you learn to analyze the root causes or reasons for an issue. Enrique's journey was written by a woman named Sonia Nazario. And originally, this was a six-part series from 2002, and it chronicled the journey of Enrique, who traveled alone from Honduras as a teenager in search of his mother in the United States. Now, Sonia Nazario spent five years researching, reporting, and writing on Enrique's journey. Nazario herself spent time with Enrique at different points throughout his travels. She also personally retraced Enrique's dangerous trip. Her story originally first appeared in the LA Times before it was published into a book. Some things to know about Enrique's journey before we begin. The story is entirely factual and Enrique is real. The story does deal with very sensitive subject matter, like loss of parents, leaving home, mistreatment, and violence and drugs. The expectations while we are reading this in class is to listen actively, follow along to the reading, respond to the journal prompts, and prepare yourself to take part in the summative Socratic seminar at the end of the unit. Right is a photo of Enrique with his grandmother. So, let's get started. Go to Classwork and you will see Enrique's journey posted under this week. This slideshow is everything that you will need. Every day that we read a chapter, there will be journal prompts for you to respond to in your personal journal. The journal is meant to look like a notebook. The table of contents have links to each day's assignment. In total, there are seven. You can click on the pages and go to the slides. Each day, there will be a couple of journal prompts for you to respond to after you've read the chapter. Read the journal prompts and respond in the text box below. To locate the day's chapters for the book, go to Classwork and click on the chapter that is assigned. The link will take you to a slideshow presentation of the chapter. Zoom in for easier reading. If you would like to listen to the chapters, in any page, go and click the Click to Listen button in the upper right-hand corner. Click Play to hear a narrator read the page to you. If you need to pause and scroll down to see the rest of the text, that's fine. The narrator and the recording will pause where you left off. Simply click Play again. As we read through the chapters, we are going to ask you to code the text. You'll be using 
translucent boxes, like this pink, blue, and yellow box that you see here, to highlight any lines that stand out to you. We are going to color code this. Use the blue highlights for anything that you have a question about. Use the yellow highlights for important ideas and pink for unfamiliar words. Let's try it. Go to page one. You will see three boxes at the bottom. I'm going to zoom in to see the text more easily. And then I can start using these boxes to highlight important lines. Remember, red is for words that are challenging, blue is for anything you have a question about, and yellow is for important parts of the text. Let's use this yellow box to highlight. So I'm going to click and drag it to the important line. Notice how you can see the text through it. It really is like a highlighter. Now, you're probably going to need more than one of these boxes. So using your keyboard, click on the box and hit Control C and then Control V. This is copy and pasting. You can also use your copy paste button and right click and resize the box using the arrows. I'm going to use pink to highlight an unfamiliar word. So I'm going to go to the text and use the pink box. Going to resize it to the size of the word that I'm going to highlight by using the arrows. And then I'm going to simply drag it and drop it over the word that's confusing. Now, not only can you highlight, but you also can feel free to write in the margins. Go to a page and click the text box at the top. Click to draw a text box and type in any comments that you might have. Like, this is the introduction to Enrique. Kind of important. You can then resize it and even change the color. You could even use an arrow in order to point out the important part of the text that you are explaining. Coding the text makes understanding and reviewing books so much easier. At the end of the unit, we will be having a summative Socratic seminar and you can use your notes that you've taken in the book to help you. Hopefully you understand how the journal works, where to find it, and how to locate the chapters that you will be reading. Let your teachers know if you have any other questions. I hope you enjoy reading this book and you learn a lot from it. Thanks for watching.